Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here on behalf of Lucky Tackle Box today. And today I get to introduce you to the Duo Realis Pencil 110. This is a walking spook style bait, you know, that back and forth walk the dog action, but it's got a very unique design. It's probably the easiest bait to walk out there. So let's break this puppy down, give you a close up of it and show you how I like to catch fish on it. All right guys, when you look at this bait up close, you can see it's a little bit over four inches. It's got big stout 4X size two hooks on there. So that's really gonna help you wrench on the fish. Now, if you notice something else, I'm gonna hold these hooks. That big single knocker in there. There's something about this. I've been fishing this bait for years next to other walk the dog style baits. And something consistently about this produces bigger fish. I look at the profile, looks the same but it walks extremely efficient in that single knocker. Now, if you look right here on the chin, it says swing design. You'll see that little bubble on the chin right there. I don't care if you've ever did walk the dog technique before. This is by far probably the, the easiest walking bait there is. And I'll show you up close how to do that walk the dog with the hands down while slowly reeling the twitching action to get that bait to glide side by side and back to forth, you know, just get that walking dog motion. Now, why is that walking the dog motion so good? Certain predatorial species love that side to side motion. And when it comes to top waters, this bait tends to get bit in colder and cleaner water more often than other style baits. That walking bait is absolutely critical during those colder, cleaner times. These are size two trebles, looks like 4X strength round bends. What that's gonna do when a fish slaps that, and the designer really gave this some thought, when a fish slaps it, a round bend has a much higher hookup ratio than those inward bend trebles that you see on a lot of crankbaits. So very smart design, very stout hooks, and they look like they're uh, hybrids, look like they can be used in salt water or fresh water. Don't quote me on that. Of course, I'm using it in fresh water today, fishing for largemouth and striped bass on it. It's things like candy. When I really like to start using it is right around 53, 54 degrees. And this is one of those walking top water style baits that excels in that colder water. And it also excels a spook style walking bait like this pencil 110 here. As it's going back and forth, it tends to draw fish out from deeper. Those deeper, cleaner reservoirs, I don't know where you go. I've been places where it's 40, 50 foot visibility and I've seen fish down on humps, 30 foot deep, and I've, hey, let me give it a shot. I throw it out there, walk it, and those fish will come from the greatest depths to come and get that bait. This bone color, when does bone work great? I'm not sure if you guys got bone or not, but bone works great in overcast. Um, it works good in the middle of a sunny day, but I really like it on those cloudy days, early mornings, later in the evening, which is perfect because that's when those 10, uh, those big bass tend to be bit shallow anyways and come out and get it. But a walking bait does have that drawing power. So it's kind of the best of all worlds right here in one with that bone color. And they said any color that you would like to pick in a top water bait, I'm gonna tell you white always first or a bone if they make it. When it comes to the equipment I like to throw the Duo 110 pencil bait on, I like a medium heavy or a heavy fast action rod. And fast just means bending right up here in the tip and it has a lot of backbone. I'm using bigger hooks and I'm using braid. I'm making as far as I possibly can cast to cover that water. This is a long range weapon right here. You're casting, you're walking that dog, you're covering a long distance of water so you want zero stretch. The braid I'm gonna suggest with any top water bait is 50 pound braid. Now aside from frogging, but that's a whole nother story, 50 pound, you have treble hooks right here. As you're walking it and the fish hits it, continue to walk it. Do not try to set the hook. Continue to walk it. If one of those treble hooks gets that fish, that braid and that no stretch, as you walk it, you're gonna feel them load up and it's enough to drive those hooks in. So 50 pound braid, you can cast a country mile. This happens to be the uh, Daiwa Salio. You can get this on the luckytacklebox.com website. Uh, awesome setup with a little Lexa 100 right, reel right there. Uh, perfect combination for throwing that bait long range and getting those hookups from a long ways and driving them back home with a nice uh, six three to one reel. You can fish seven eights as fast as you want. Uh, just that bigger deeper spool for those long range casts with that braid is critical. If you're using a shallow spool, you know, one of the one of those spools with less yardage, you can easily cast to the end. This bait casts a country mile quite easily. So a deeper spool that's gonna hold more yardage is probably gonna some, be something you want to use. So when it comes to targets for the Pencil 110, basically 
you could target a variety of things. Fish can be deep on a hump, you can see them. If the water's clean, I would say you try throwing this over deeper water. If you have dirty water, the fish tend to be much shallower in dirty water. For example, you can see this long tapering point. Go ahead and look over here, and you'll see this long tule point coming out right here. And if you glance back to the left by my hand over here, all this water out in front of it, this is 50, 60 feet off the end of this point is only three or four foot deep. And in dirty water where you could only see down a foot or two, those fish will easily be five foot or shallower. And this is five foot deep out here. So I can easily throw across this point. But what you really wanna do is you kinda wanna throw off the point first. You're gonna start out here in deeper water. So I'm gonna start out here in deeper water. I'm gonna work it back to the boat. And if I don't get bit in deeper water, then I'm gonna progressively reel up and a cast shallower and shallower and shallower. And I'm gonna just work my way all the way up onto that point covering water. So you could start from the outside. That's a common technique, starting from the outside, fishing deep and moving up shallower. Now, if it's first thing in the morning, what you might wanna do is start on the side of that point, move up to the side and cast out deeper and bring your bait up shallower. Now, the reason for that casting deeper and bringing your bait shallower is what happens is if I draw fish out from here, let's say I'm working my bait back and fish follow this all the way to the boat. Well, my boat's positioned in deeper water right now. And if it's low light hours, the fish will move quite easily. As you can see, it's the middle of the day right here. So I have no problem casting from deep to shallow because I don't think the fish are gonna, they're gonna follow in the middle of a bright sunny day. They're gonna eat it, commit or not. But if it's a low light hour later in the evening, um, first thing in the morning, I want to position my boat shallow, cast out deep and bring it back shallow because if those fish follow, they'll go right back out to that slightly deeper spot that they were at. If they follow right now, if, if this was the morning time and I was casting from deeper to shallow, I can pull them out over deeper water and then they'll scatter and not move back to that same spot. So if I was up shallow, I seen them follow, I knew I had fish, follow that in. If they didn't eat it, I'll make a second cast. After that, I might try something different, but I have located fish with a top water bait. So another thing you wanna do with a walking bait as much as possible is you want to parallel structure, you want to parallel cover. Cover is anything that can biodegrade, break apart plant life, trees, anything that ain't gonna last there a long time and your structures, your actual dirt or rocks or boulders or something like that, things that are gonna be there forever. So you got your structure and you got your cover. In this case, I'm going to make a cast and I am going to bring it down this Thule wall. And this is that same cast I would make early in the morning or later in the evening. Now you can do that in the middle of a bright sunny day too. These fish will be more than likely buried tighter into structure cover as the sun's up high or they're going to be in grass just under the surface. But you can see I can easily bring my bait down that cover line quite easily. And I'm strictly paralleling the bank or pa paralleling an offshore target. Just bringing it right in there close. So when would I fish a bait like the Pencil 110? It's simple, as long as that water's warmer than 52, 53 degrees, a bass is usually willing to commit to top water as long as the conditions are right. Low light hours, early in the morning, later in the evening, and all the way back in the fall till that water's probably down about 53, 52 degrees once again. You wanna remember if it's bright and sunny, you need to fish very tight to wherever those bass are gonna hide in. They don't like to sit right in the middle of the sun and feed unless it's early in the spring and sometimes they'll do that, but they really wanna be in the grass. So if it's bright and sunny, make sure you're fishing grass that's just below the surface to where you're hanging right there next to that strike zone. Don't make the bass travel a country mile unless it's crystal clear water. So keep it as tight as that structure or cover as you can. Keep it up as tight next to that boat dock as you can and you're gonna catch a heck of a lot of fish. Remember guys, do not set that hook. Keep reeling. Keep walking that dog. I'm Nick, the Informative Fisherman on behalf of Lucky Tackle Box. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you next time.